Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy, and today we're going to start learning about Git and GitHub. Git is a type of version control, and if you're unfamiliar with what version control is, I will get into that more in just a moment. The reason why I selected Git for my tutorials is because it is the most commonly used, and even if you prefer another one locally for your development, there's a good chance that you might end up working for a company or want to be part of a project that does use Git for version control, so it's good to get familiar. Coding Commander. If this is your first time joining me, I do web development tutorials using the popular LAMP stack. What you're looking at right now on this page is my written lesson that corresponds to this video, and I will link it in the video description. In this lesson, we're going to start using Git for version control and project management. If you do not have a Linux environment set up, if you don't know how to access Linux or use Linux, right now, um, on the top of this lesson, there's a link to the written lessons, and in the video description, I will link the playlist for my videos to replicate the programming environment that I use. So to start off, what is Git? As I mentioned, it's used for version control. Basically, that means that it's used to manage the constant changes that we are going to be making to our code. Uh, preparing us to start our first coding project, which is going to be creating a datability score app. I um, that was actually the first app I ever wrote in PHP, but I'm going to do a redo of it, more current. So when we start making this project, we are going to be building it one block of code at a time. Once we get a block of code to work, we're probably going to want to go ahead and save a version. That way, if while we're working on the next block of code, you know, we might break the whole thing and get confused and not know what's going on. It's going to be really convenient to be able to go back to the last working version. And trust me, you know, and I mean, I've gotten lazy with my git commits and stuff in the past too, but sometimes something happens where, you know, the cat comes in, <laughs> deletes three quarters of your code, or, you know, you're, especially if you're real frameworky and you're working with a lot of frameworks and there's specific ways you do things, you have to add code here, add code there, things like that. Sometimes while you're doing something new, learning something new, trying to get something to work, you can mess up code that used to be working and get to a point where you're really confused. So while you're learning, even though you're learning, just learning right now, it's still going to be really important. It's going to save you a lot of time if you keep up with your git commits. You can use git to create local repositories aka repos for your project and a repository is basically a place to store your project. It's kind of like a hidden directory. Once we get inside of our boxes and start using git I think this will be a lot more clear to you what's going on. Just to touch on, the Git file system is similar to the Linux file system. And I will, if you haven't watched my intro to Linux video, I will link that in the video description as well, where I go over the Linux file tree, where we have directories and files. For Git, we have trees and blobs. Basically, a tree is like a directory and a blob is like a file. First things first, let's get Git installed. If you're not sure if you have Git installed, you can type Git space version. It'll tell you what version you have of Git. If you don't have Git, um, for Ubuntu and Debian flavors, this is the command that you'd use. I'm using Ubuntu server. For other flavors that are not Debian, this is a common command to install. But go ahead, on my written lesson, I have a link to the Git downloads page, and you can look up your particular distro to make sure you type the right command. Next, we are going to do some configuration. And what these commands are going to do is there's actually a git config file, and it's going to edit that file by setting the variable names as we specify in these commands. The first one is to change the text editor. I use by or vim or whatever you want to call it in my tutorials. That's my preferred editor. So in this example, 
git space config space dash dash global space core dot editor space and then in quotes I put BIM. If you want to send it to a different editor where I have BIM, put you know the name of the editor that you want to use. Next, I'm going to set the variables for username and email. Git space config space dash dash global space user dot name space and then in quotes I put candy66. You're going to put your name in quotes here, whatever you want your name to be. Then for the email, git space config space dash dash global space user dot email space. And then I put coding commanders at gmail.com. But right there where it says coding commanders at gmail.com, you'll put whatever your email address is. The next step is to create a git repository. What we're going to want to do first is to go to the directory where our project is located. So for example, say your project is located in slash var slash www slash html slash projects. You would cd, which is change directory, to slash var slash www slash html slash projects. Projects is a directory that's located in the html directory. HTML is located in www directory. www is located in var directory. And var is in our root directory. Step two is to create an empty repository. You do that by typing git init. Step three is going to be to add code to our repo. Git add, in this example, there's, I have two examples here on my website. One is git add dot. That's going to add everything in the directory. So in our example, we're in directory projects. Every subdirectory, every file inside of projects will be added if we do a dot there. We can also specify what file we want to add. So in this example, where it says git add file.php, all we're adding is this one file, file.php. Git commit. When you git commit, you will be prompted to enter a message regarding the version. Your git repo will be updated with the current version. This is like when you're updating. Now, this is locally. This isn't GitHub yet. We're still local in our local environment backing up the version so we can pull it back and go to it if we need to. It's going to prompt you to enter a message. Whatever text editor you set on the configuration is the text editor that you'll type the message in, which is why it's important. That's going to be a text editor that you're comfortable with. Here's some additional commands that are going to be useful you're going to want to use. Git status gives you useful information about the files that you're preparing. These aren't, this git status is not going to give you information about um, actual commits. It's going to give you information about the stuff you're preparing that you're setting up to commit. So basically you can make sure that you have the right files prepared. Things look okay. Git log, on the other hand, is going to show you your past commit dates and comments. So you can kind of you can look up the log of all your commits for that project in that repo. Here is an example of what you would get typing git log. And again, git version, that's going to tell you what version of git you're using. So now I'm in my box, and I'm basically going to do the homework assignment on the written lesson that corresponds to this video. Again, the link's in the video description. I do suggest you pause the video, read through the homework, so you can get a clear idea of what it is that we're doing. Basically, we're preparing for creating our first coding project. Next video, we're going to work on making an app that calculates somebody's datability score. So our first step is going to be to CD in the right directory. CD means change directory if you didn't know. So let's CD space slash var slash www slash HTML. First let's just 
CD into here. Now I want you to LS. This is going to list everything in there. You see how we have that projects directory? If this is your first time joining me, then go ahead right now. If you did not see projects when you LS, type MKDIR space projects. If you do have the projects directory, let's go ahead and see a D into projects. Let's LS. Now we're going to make a directory, MKDIR space, and I'm going to call it dating app. Now we're going to CD into dating app. And what this is, dating app is going to be the directory where we create our project next time. So this is going to be the directory that we want to add to our Git repository for version control. So as we create the project, we can keep on saving every time we get a block of code to work. And then if we mess up everything, we could go back to our last working version and everything will be okay. Also, when we get it up on GitHub, other people can contribute, help edit it, things of that nature. So it's GitHub's gonna help get you part of an online community of programmers. You might find other projects you'd like to work on on GitHub or useful code. Like say you're, if you want to create a function to do something, there's probably something on GitHub that does something similar that you could work from. These are some of the um, advantages of using GitHub. Okay, so now we are in the dating app directory. I would go ahead and type git space version. Okay, so git is installed on here already. So go ahead and type git version. If you do not have git installed, go to my website, follow those directions. You know, it's just a command. So see which command <laughs> you type. Now it's time to configure our git. Let's start with the text editor because I don't want anything to pop up in nano. I believe by default it will be on nano. And I don't use nano, I use bib, so I want to make sure that any time it pulls up anything in a text editor, it comes in the editor that I'm comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with any Linux editors, I suggest using bib because that's what I will be using in this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and type git space config space dash dash global space core dot editor space and then I'm putting vim in quotation marks. If there's another editor you want to use that is not vim, you would put the name of the editor you want to use in there. We're going in and we're editing the git config file, setting that variable. Next we're going to configure the username. So again it's going to be git space config space dash dash global space user dot name space and then in quotations put your name I put candy 66 lastly we will configure the email git space config and I am putting coding commanders at gmail.com but you put your email address there next we're going to create an empty repository and we're going to do that by typing git space in it. Okay now what we're going to do is we're going to create an index file touch space index dot php. Okay now we're ready to git space add space dot. Let's do a git status. Now git space commit when this pops up, in by, if you're in by, you would type I to get into insert mode. If you left it in nano, um, you're going to have to Google it. <laughs> and go ahead and type your message. Maybe first commit. Press escape to go back to command mode. Then capital Z, capital Z. Now let's get log. There you go. You can see our commit history. I did it twice because the first time I accidentally like deleted the video or something so I <laughs> I'd record this again so you can see the two commits there with the messages and the date and the time. Now we have our local repository set up. We did our first commit. Next I'm going to take you to the web <laughs> and show you GitHub and show you how to take that code in our local repo and push it over to your github account okay so now i'm at github.com i'll put the link in the video description if you're going to sign up 
right down here it says sign up for github press that button if you don't have an account yet and just you know fill out the information i already have a github account so i'm going to log in once you're logged in the green button where it says new repository we're going to click on that for the repository name let's do dating app we have it marked as public if you choose private i believe you have to pay then go ahead and click this green button create repository once you do it it gives you directions up here make sure it's clicked on https this video i'm not going to show you ssh i will in a future video if you're using ssh um, this video is not going to help you there we're just going to set it up where we log in with our username and password right here it will show you what to type once you're done typing the commands that github instructs you to type go back to your github repository you might have to refresh the page and then you should see the index.php file we created with that touch space index.php command and also the readme file you created through the github instructions in the next video when we actually start creating our coding project we are going to go in and edit these files and we will do more commits as well thank you for joining me i hope you guys learned a lot and you're all pumped up to build our dating app i know i'm really excited it's gonna be a really fun little project we're gonna to get to practice a lot of very useful skills like building a form writing logic it's going to be really fun if you have any questions, please comment below, let me know. Also, let me know if you'd like me to do a part two of this video where we get more in depth with the Git, or if right now you think this is good and you just want to get started coding, let me know what kind of videos you would like me to do so I know what to do. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, happy coding.